Hello there, Roseanne. I just wanted to get these videos to you tonight. Um, as you'll note from my voice, I'm still sick. I'm actually, I think, in week five now of this illness. It seems to keep mutating. Um, I'm on my fourth prescription, and uh, but I didn't want to hold you up anymore in terms of what we did in class, so I figured I would record these videos. So if you hear sort of an abrupt pause as in the recording, it's because I had to pause the video because I'm coughing or some other illness kind of thing that, that I didn't want you necessarily to hear. So I'm going to have two videos for you. This is the first. And um, what we essentially did in class was we divided the class up into sort of three sections. The first section was we looked at this particular article, and I will have a printed copy of this article for you available um, in class, and I will, um, when you show up, I guess, next week, and I will also send you the PDF of this as an attachment to this article so that or attachment to this email so that you have a copy of the article. But what I wanted to do was sort of go through and show you how I read articles so that you could, you know, as students going through this class and going through this process, be able to read these in a more quick manner than I imagine that you did for your journal article reviews. So this particular one here, um, you can see it's an article from Educational Administration Quarterly, uh, which is one of three journals that are published by the University Council for Educational Administration. Now UCEA is the main professional association for educational administrators. Um, now it's a academic or research organization so you know as a Connecticut administrator you know an 092 person this is probably not an organization that you would join but for all of the folks that teach um, in 092 programs like myself and you know all of my colleagues this is basically the main research professional association that we would be a part of and as you can see from the uh, screen here. I'm accessing this through the Sacred Heart um, library site. So Educational Administration Quarterly is one of those journals that our database does have the full text articles for. So what I did in class was I basically gave the students eight minutes to read through this article and I didn't give them any instruction up front. So if you want to sort of mimic what we did in class, what I would suggest you do is pause this video right now and start reading the PDF for this particular article and time yourself to eight minutes and see how you do. See what you read and what you focus upon and how far you get. So I'm going to what we do in in typical video um, language. If you remember back to sort of the old TV days where they had that um, that wooden bar where it was the black and white thing and they sort of clicked down on it to indicate that something was starting or starting, you know, stopping. Um, basically, when you do an online video like this, what most people tend to do is they clap because that'll have a specific sound signature in the video that will allow you to indicate this is where you want to cut it. So I'm going to clap right now, and if you want to sort of mimic what we did in class, take eight minutes to read this particular PDF and see how you do. Okay, I'm going to assume that the eight minutes is up now and that you've read through. Um, in class, what I did was I talked to the students about how they approach this article and how far they got and what kinds of things they read. Now, as I read through this article, one of the things that I do, um, you'll note that the abstract here for this particular article is actually very structured. You'll see that they outline a purpose, they outline a research design, they outline the findings, and they outline the conclusion. Now, most abstracts that you'll find in journal articles, as you've probably noticed, don't do this. Educational Admin Quarterly does, which is actually a really nice feature of it. Typically speaking, I would just skim the abstract, but in a case like this where it is very structured and very laid out, and where all the pieces are identified, I would probably read through this closely. So I'd take about 30 to 60 seconds to read through this particular one. Now, 
as I go through the article, in all honesty, I'm just skimming through the introduction. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for what the article is about. So as I get here, I see this article studies the effects of. You know, so that sentence is going to stand out to me. So as I skim through the introduction, I'm going to notice that particular sentence. And then I'm just going to continue to skim. And what I'm looking for is essentially, you know, what are they researching? And you can see here in the last paragraph of the introduction, they tell me that here's the specific, actually in this case, two research questions that they are interested in. So I've taken about 30 to 60 seconds to read the abstract. I'm going to take about 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds, to skim through the introduction to see what that purpose of the study is and sort of that overview of the article that they talk about. And if you remember the class that we had in the library, I went through the structure of an article. And one of the things I said in a good introduction was they'll have sort of, they'll give you a sense of what the article is going to be about. So this set part here, where it gives me the two research questions, along with this part here, where it tells me what the study was about. That is exactly what I'm looking for in the introduction. And it's going to take me about 60 seconds to skim through and find it. Now, after that, in all honesty, unless this is an article that's right up my alley, that this is the exact topic that I am interested in pursuing for my own research study, I'm not going to read a lot more beyond the introduction in terms of what comes next. So in this case, we've got a theoretical framework. If you remember when we were in the library, I talked about how Often you might see a conceptual framework here, or you might see a literature review here. If this is a topic that's right up my alley, that you know this essentially is the study I want to do, I just want to do it in a different context, a context that's more personal to me, I might read through this theoretical framework or through this literature review. Otherwise, in all honesty, I'm skipping all this stuff. So the bottom part of 98, all of 99, all of 100 all of 101, and the first part of 102, I'm skipping all that. That is not relevant in terms of trying to figure out what this article has to say. Now, as I look through the methodology, or in this case they call it the method, in terms of the heading, what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for some key information. So I'm looking for the type of sample that they have, and if you go through, you'll see that there's not a lot of information. They tell you about the sample, but they don't tell you about the sampling procedure. And if you remember back to the article review format um, that we did, we were looking specifically for the sampling procedure. But I'm going to be looking for keywords. So some of the keywords that are going to jump out to me, for example, a case study design. So that's the specific methodology that they're using is a case study design. And in particular, they're citing yin, which for someone like myself who has a background in methodology, Yin is going to mean something to me. For your purposes, the whole fact that they're looking at case study design as opposed to ethnography or a randomized control trial or some other type of methodology, that's what's going to stand out to you. Now, all of this other information, while it's useful information to know, it's not necessarily critical to your understanding of the study. So I'm just going to skim through this to see you know, what it is they're talking about but I'm not going to spend a great deal of time looking through all of this information here in the methodology. Now when we get to the subsection on data collection, I am going to look at this a little bit. I want to know where their data comes from. So you can see here they have observations. Let's see what else they have. They have interviews that are here. Um, description. That looks to be basically it. So, you know, they have two types of things here. They have observations and interviews, which they're data collection. So, again, you notice how up here in this method section where they were talking about the sample, I sort of skimmed through that. I, I noticed some of the keywords like the case study, but the rest of it I really just sort of, you know, looked through quickly looking for keywords. I stopped here at the data collection and I read through that a little bit closer, probably spending maybe a minute, minute and a half, looking for specific things. And as you can see, you know, I found things like the observations, I found things like the interviews here. 
So it gave me a sense as to what it was they were doing, where their data was coming from. Essentially, how they came up with their findings is really what I'm looking for in this particular section. So once I found that, I basically just started to skim again. So I'm going through this probably in about, again, another 60 to 90 seconds. When we get to the data analysis, I want to know what kind of data analysis method that they used. And they tell me in the very first sentence, they used grounded theory, you know, which is basically what I want to know. Telling me that they used grounded theory tells me everything that I need to know in terms of how they did the analysis. Now, when we come to class next time, we're actually going to go through and talk about some of the data collection methods and the data analysis methods for qualitative and quantitative methodologies. And so grounded theory will mean something more to you following next class. But what you want to do now is you want to look for what that particular term is. So the method of data analysis, in this case, is grounded theory. Now, the rest of this whole section basically describes to you how they did the grounded theory. That's not necessarily relevant to you at this stage. You just need to know that they use grounded theory. And um, following our next class, you'll know exactly what grounded theory means. In terms of the findings, in all honesty, I tend to skip these. And the reason I tend to skip these is because, in all honesty, when I get to the conclusions and implications, so you'll see I'm going through 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 pages here where, you know, it's all just findings. Same thing with the discussion. If you remember from our class in the library, I talked about how the discussion is basically where the authors talk about what they found or their results or finding section in light of what was already known. So essentially in light of what they presented in their literature review, or in the case of this article, their theoretical framework. Again, this is all information that's nice to know if this is a study that is right up your alley but if this is just a study that is on the topic that you're interested in but not necessarily it's the exact same thing you want to do again I would skip all this discussion so I'm looking at page 120, 121, 22, 23, 24 or at least half of 24 all that I can really skip this is where I want to start reading closely and in all honesty of all of the sections of the article that we've looked at thus far it is this section that I probably read the closest because you'll see here in these first couple of paragraphs what the author does is they essentially describe everything that they found so everything that you would have read in the previous 8 to 12 pages is summarized in these first couple three paragraphs here um, you know so this is really where you want to read closely because this is the genesis of the article if you go back to the abstract one of the things that they had in the abstract was a little, I think it was two sentences on the findings. So let's go back and take a look. Yeah, so they had a couple of sections here on the findings, and essentially what this was, everything that you see in the summary is outlined in these two sentences. Actually, I think it's only now that I'm looking at it. It's only a single set. No, no, it is two sentences. So everything that you find really that were germane in the summary are the things that you find in those two sentences. So again, when I get to that conclusions and implications section, that's where I'm going to start reading closely. And this is essentially these three paragraphs here are where I'm going to probably spend two or three minutes reading. So if you think about what I've done here, I've spent about 30 to 60 seconds talking about, you know, looking for things in the introduction. I've skipped the theoretical framework or literature review. I've spent probably about two or three minutes looking through the methodology for some key terms, things like their sampling procedure, things like the specific framework or methodology that they chose, the specific data collection methods that they chose to use, the specific methods of data analysis. I skipped the findings and discussion section and then spent probably another two or three minutes Reading closely these three paragraphs right here that essentially give me the genesis, this is sort of the so what of the article. You know, this is really what they want you to take away from the article. 
And if you add that all up, that really equals your sort of six to eight minutes that I would have asked you to read the article. So as you look through these and as you're going through and doing your annotated bibliography, because you've got to read through a lot of these articles to do that annotated bibliography, this is a way of quickly going through them. You know, now, I've obviously been reviewing literature for quite some time compared to what most of the students in 689 have been doing. So, you know, I, I wouldn't expect you to be at the sort of same level as I am. And one of the things I stressed during class last Friday was the fact that, you know, this is an iterative process. You guys are new to this, so it's going to take you a little bit longer, but here are some tips that will help speed up the process a little bit for you. And as you're looking through these articles, that's one of the things that I want you to remember. So this is basically takes me to the conclusion of the first video, and this was essentially the first of the three sections that we had in the class. So um, I'll post this on YouTube in a private setting so that only you can access it. And... Um, Hopefully this will be useful to you as you're working through on your annotated bibliography and getting you ready for the next class.